Good morning, church. It's great to be with you once again on this Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us for the Word today. I know that the Word is going to thoroughly bless you. Today's Word is going to be a challenging Word. Today's Word is going to be one of those words that, you know, the Lord sent His Word for a number of different reasons. And one is to, to discipline us and to correct us, to bring us into check. And I believe today's Word is straight from the heart of God for us, His people, in this time. So stay tuned, stay with us. And I know that the Word will thoroughly bless you today. Before we get into the Word, why don't we bow our heads and pray as we dedicate the service unto the Lord. So Father, it's into your presence that we come. We thank you, Lord, that as the Word gets spoken, we know, Holy Spirit, that you take the Word of God and that you carry it into the hearts of believers. Thank you, Lord, that our hearts are ready to receive your Word now. Lord, that our hearts are ready soil that as the word of God falls onto the soil of our hearts, that it will produce a harvest in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that we will commit to be doers of the word and not hearers only. I ask, Holy Spirit, as I submit myself to you now, Lord, that you will think through my mind, that you will speak through my lips, that the word will come forth with clarity and understanding, bringing understanding to every mind, dispersing and dispelling all confusion in Jesus' mighty name, thank you for your presence that is always with us. That you said in your word that you would never leave us and that you'd never forsake us. So we dedicate the service to you and we declare, Lord, that whatever gets spoken here today gets carried by the wind of the Spirit into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Our well, family, today I want to speak to you about a topic and the title of my message is simply called hot or cold. So I want to speak to you about being lukewarm. What does that look like? What did Jesus say about lukewarm Christians? And how? what are the signs, rather, that we can have a look at and at our own lives and see whether our spiritual temperature is where it should be with the Lord? As we read the word, my foundation scripture is found in Revelations chapter 3, verse 15, and 16. I know all the things that you do, that they are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, because since you are lukewarm water, or like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. And these words found in the book of Revelations is really words that Jesus speaks here. He says, because you are lukewarm, you are like lukewarm water. You're neither hot nor cold. I will spit you out of my mouth. Other translations uses the word, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now in the scripture that we've just read, John gets a revelation from God and he writes the book of Revelations. And really he starts off by writing to the seven churches in Asia. And one of the churches that he writes to is the church of, of Laodicea. Now Laodicea, the church, is known as a lukewarm church. In fact, that word is a Greek word. Laodicea means lukewarm or it also means indifferent. And so the church found itself where they had lost their first love for God. They had grown a lukewarm in their faith. They were still Christians. Many of them were still going to church, but their hearts was far from God. Their, their focus really have shifted from God and shifted on material wealth. If you read the portion of scripture, they will say things like, we are wealthy, we've got everything that we need. Yet spiritually, they were on the decline and they were poor, they were blind. Spiritually, they were blinded by the wealth that they and the provision that they have received and enjoyed. And so they grew cold in their love for God. You know, they would go to church as a means to ease their conscience. They would even be active in church as a means to say that we are busy with the things of God. But you see, church, you can be busy with the things of God, but you can be far from God. And let that be a lesson to us as churchgoers that we must never replace God with being busy with the things of the Lord. And so 
And that is what happened in this church, is that they would get involved, they would go to church, but only when it was convenient for them. They really, in essence, became Sunday Christians. And so God was not their first priority. They became Sunday Christians, meaning that on Sundays they would go to church, they would practice all the religious things that they needed to in the church, but from Monday to Saturday, they would be out in the world and their behavior would not reflect Christ. Now notice how the scripture starts off that we've just read. The, the scripture in, in Revelation starts off by saying, I know all the things you do. Other translations says, I know your deeds. And so our deeds is a reflection of what we believe. And so it is very important that our deeds line up with our speech. In other words, we must walk the walk and not simply talk the talk. And so many Christians today walk the walk, or rather they talk the talk, but their lives does not reflect Jesus Christ. And that is with what the God speaks about here in the book of Revelation. Jesus says, I want you to be either hot or cold, but don't be in between. Don't be indifferent. Don't be indecisive. You know, and as Christians, we today need to make a stand for the Lord. You know, the Bible speaks in Matthew 5 from verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But it says, if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. It goes on to say in verse 14 of Matthew 5, it says, You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives life, it gives life, excuse me, to everyone in the room. In the same way, listen to this, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, friend, as you are the light, as I'm the light into the world, our good deeds will bring glory to God. Because as a child of God, you and I understand that it is not through our goodness, it is not through our strength or our human ability or talents even, that we are able to accomplish certain things. But it is by the grace of God. And that is why we give God the glory. When we do that, when we give God the glory for the good that we are able to do in life, God receives the glory. And people look at us and they will see the light in us and they will give glory to the God our Father. Because He is the one that empowers you. And so Jesus says in Matthew 10 verse 33, and I'm going to read from the message translation. It says here, Jesus said, Stand up for me against world opinions, and I will stand up for you before my Father in heaven. If you turn tail and run, do you think that you'll be covered or that I'll cover you? Other translation says. So here's the thing. What we need to do is we need to stand up and we need to stand up for truth and we need to stand up for Jesus. This very same verse, Matthew 10, 33, you have read before in your Bible and it read something like this. If you deny me or disown me before men, I will deny you or disown you before my Father who is in heaven. And so we know that we cannot deny Jesus. We need to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so Jesus gives this parable again in the book of Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 13. Now I'm not going to read for time's sake the entire scripture. I'll explain the parable to you, which I'm sure many of you have read. But I want to just read verse 1, and then I will explain what happens further on. In Matthew, it says here, Jesus speaks. He says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened 
to ten virgins who took their lamps to meet with the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and the Bible says five were foolish. And so what transpires further on is that the five um, wise and the five foolish were all waiting for the bridegroom. The bridegroom was delayed and they fell asleep. All of them did. Now when they fell asleep, eventually at midnight the Bible says there was a shout that the bridegroom had arisen or arrived rather. When the bridegroom arrived, the ten virgins woke up, they trimmed their lamps, but the five foolish that did not take extra oil with them to trim their lamps found that they were short on oil and therefore they wanted to borrow oil from the five wise virgins. The five who about wise virgins then said to them, rather best that you go buy yourself lest there not be enough for you and for us. And while they were away, the bridegroom came and he went into the venue, the doors were locked, and when the five foolish virgins returned with their oil and knocked on the door, the groom said, go away, I do not know you. And so it is so important that when we read the scripture, we must understand that Jesus here is talking about the born again Christians. You know, when we speak about the, the ten virgins, they were all virgins. They were all born again, blood washed, and they were all really believers in Christ. But five was foolish, five was ready, and five were not. Five was foolish, five was wise. And so verse 13 says here in this parable, now again, I'm reading from Matthew 25, it's verse 13 says, Watch therefore, Jesus saying, for you neither know the day nor the hour the Son of Man is coming. You will neither know the day or the time the Son of Man is coming. Jesus is telling you and me that we need to be ready. We must not be lukewarm. We must be ready for the coming of Christ because He is the bridegroom. He's coming to fetch His church, which is the bride. And so we need to be ready and waiting as five wise virgins. You know, it's very important that you understand that the oil that it's speaking about refers to the anointing. Now Jesus, at one portion, he stands up in the synagogue and he reads the book and he reads from Isaiah. And this was his custom. Jesus always used to read scripture in the synagogue. But he reads this portion of scripture. It's in Isaiah, I believe it's 61. I might be, I might be incorrect. But he reads this portion of scripture. We read this in Luke. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. And so child of God, you and I are anointed to perform certain things here on the earth. And we cannot perform those things if we are lukewarm, if we are not ready, if our lamps are not trimmed and filled with oil. If the anointing does not operate in our lives every single day. And how does the anointing operate in your life? Is simply when you call upon the name of the Lord, you're conscious of His presence in your life every single day. And so when the Bible speaks about ten virgins, five ready, five not, it really speaks about the church. I believe that 50% of the church will not be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now I want to clarify this. This does not mean that all born-again Christians don't go to heaven when they die. But the Bible says that five virgins, five born-again Christians were not ready. And so my encouragement to you today and the message today is that we have to be in that 5% that are ready. That when Jesus comes for his church, we will be taken up in the rapture with him. You see, friend, the five that are not ready, they will endure the time of tribulation here on this earth. You know, God has given us a choice. And it's simply for us to choose either life or death. And so all ten virgins started up in a good place where they all had the anointing. The oil was sufficient for their lambs, but they did not count on the delay of the bridegroom. They started out great. The five foolish 
started out like the five wise virgins, ready with their lamps trimmed, ready to go out and meet the bridegroom. But you see, the delay caused them to run out of oil. And so a delay is not a no-show. Let me say that again. A delay is not a no-show. The fact that the bridegroom was delayed did not mean that he was not going to pitch up. We need to be ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to 2 Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish and that all should reach repentance. You see, Jesus' the second coming is delayed because he wants to give every single person on this planet the opportunity, every chance of accepting him as their Lord and Savior, from turning away from the old life, from repenting and turning to God. In Matthew 24, uh, verse 12 to 14, again, Jesus speaks here, he says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures till the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And so it's clear here, Jesus says, you know, lawlessness in these last days will abound. And we certainly see that in our world today. You know, there's a lot of lawlessness. People do not respect or adhere the law. And therefore, we find that many, the Bible says here, Many will fall away. Many will grow cold in their love for God. But verse 13 of Matthew 24 is key. It says those who endure. There's an endurance. There's a perseverance that is required from you and from me. It says those who endure till the end will be saved. So it's not about how you start the race. It's not about how quickly you're out of the blocks. But it is rather that you finish the race that you have started. So here in this portion of scripture in Matthew that we've just read, Jesus is speaking about the last days. He is speaking about what will happen in the last days. So when he speaks about lawlessness will abound um, and the love of many will grow cold. This is not Jesus confessing negatively. This is Jesus prophesying of what will happen in the last days and just like the word but is a conjunction and connects a previous thought uh, to the current thought so too is the word and and so we started reading the scripture from verse 12 that says and because lawlessness will abide i want to take you back to verse 11 it says then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many and so the lord is showing us here and telling us that in these last days, there will be voices. There will be many of those, of those who would call themselves prophets and they will deceive many. But the scripture is clear that no one knows the date or the time when the Son of God will return. In fact, not even Jesus knows the day or the time when he will return. But rather, only the Father in heaven knows the day and time. But there are signs that you and I can look at. There are things in the world that you and I can see that's happening around the world. And um, many people are growing cold in their faith. And hence my message to you today is I want you to, 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 to hold on to your faith. You know, Jesus prayed for Peter and Jesus prays for Peter this way. You see, he prays for Peter saying, I pray that your faith not fail you. And that is our prayer today for you. That is why I'm bringing this message. And perhaps it's not a popular message. Perhaps it's not a, 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 an inspiring message or a motivational message. But it is a truthful message that you and I, as born again Christians, if we grow cold in our fervor, in our love for God, grow cold in the things that we do for God, then you and I stand a real chance of missing 
the rapture when it takes place. And so what I want to do in, as I close, I want us to have a look at some things that you and I can look at to take our spiritual temperature to see, you know, what are the things in our lives? What is the telltale signs that I perhaps have to take my temperature because perhaps I'm growing cold in my walk with God? Number one, the first thing that goes is your prayer life. It becomes difficult to pray. You don't want to pray. You see, when we pray, we draw close to God. The second thing that we do, and often as, as a sign that you are growing cold, is that you neglect your Bible reading time. You neglect your Bible reading time. It's difficult to read the scriptures. It makes no sense to you. Because you're trying with your intellect to understand. Because the anointing, the Spirit of God, is not being fed in your life. And so reading the scriptures becomes difficult. The third thing that happens, you become less and less involved in church. You start attending less and less church. And the less you attend church, my friend, the less you will start missing it. And that is the ploy of the devil, to try and keep you away from the things of God. And so you start getting less involved in church. You start going to church. You start finding fault with everything around you that should justify that you shouldn't go to church. You know, people, I've heard people say this, I don't have to go to church to be saved. I love the Lord. I've got a relationship with Him. Sure, I understand that. But there is a scripture in Hebrews 10, 25 that says, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. And wait for it. It goes on to say that as some has formed the habit of doing you see, in these last days, the devil will try and draw people away from the church. Why? Because he knows that a good Bible teaching church will bring you word that will, that will grow your faith. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that faith comes, maybe not Hebrews, excuse me, I forget the Bible reference at this stage, but it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we know, the devil knows that as we go to church, our faith gets fed. The fourth thing that starts getting, or that starts dropping off, is you stop spending time with the Holy Spirit. In other words, you stop having conversations and intimate moments with the Holy Spirit. It, the Holy Spirit's presence starts to make you feel uncomfortable. And that is what the presence of God will do. You see, no sin can stand in the presence of God. And so when we spend time with the Holy Spirit, He convicts us, not condemns us, but He convicts us of things that shouldn't be in our lives. And when you grow cold or lukewarm towards the things of God, you spend less time with the Holy Spirit because you don't want to be in His presence because it makes you feel uncomfortable. And so those are just four of the signs. Now, I guess there's more. I guess this is not an exhaustive list. But those are four things, four temperature checks that I want you to consider in your life. Number one, how's your prayer life? Number two, how's your Bible reading time? Number three, how is your time that you spend in the, um, in the Word of God? Um, number three is, number four is, how do you, how's your time spending with the Holy Spirit? Do you spend time with the Holy Spirit? And so when you do these temperature checks, you will very quickly see where you are in regards to your relationship with God. You see, it's not about a works thing. It's not about how many times, or how many hours I pray, or how many times I read my Bible, how many times I go to church. It's none of those things. But you know, Christian, when we're about the Father's business, Jesus says, when I come to the earth, what will I find? Will I find faith? And so God wants us. He wants to find us busy with the things that he has called us to. So being a lukewarm Christian, Revelation says that God will, Jesus will spit you out of his mouth. Other translations, as I mentioned, vomit you out of his mouth. But we need to make a stand for the Lord. We need to stand up in these last days and be counted for our faith. You know, do not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power 
unto salvation. And as I go, I want to say to you, I spoke about you being the light, you being the salt. You know, when you refuse to witness and bring flavor to this earth, the very people that you do not witness to or do not give the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ, those are the very people that will persecute you at the end of the day. Well, child of God, I trust that you really took to heart this message and you will really do a temperature check on your spiritual life because here is my belief, my prayer and my commitment is that each and every one of us will be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. When he comes to take his bride, we will be that five wise virgins that has got surplus oil, enough oil to carry us through, even if there is a delay. And the delay is not because God is trying to test your patience. The delay is because God is compassionate and he does not want to see anybody go to hell. Well, God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday and the rest of the week. And remember, here at His Church, we are committed to pray for you. We are committed to lift you up in prayer. And let us hear from you. Put a comment on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Communicate with us. Let us know how you are doing. And also, if you've got any prayer requests, if there's anything that you want us to stand in agreement with, we as a church, we will do that glad before you. We will gladly hold your hands up in the time of difficulty. We love you. I trust that we will meet each other soon, face to face one day. Remember our Sunday services on 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning. And it is out in Kailami. The suburb is called Barbecue Downs. And we are in a school venue called the Pinnacle College Waterfall. Come and join us for a Sunday morning service. We will be so happy to meet you. God bless you.